and the action has already started with Jeff Jarrett in there against David Elder. And special commentator right out here with us today, the world heavyweight champion, Jerry DeKean Lawler. We got some action going, and Jeff looking very good, Jerry. I thought I was Dave Brown there for a second, Lance, yeah. but I'll uh, <laughs> just uh, occupy a seat here for a couple of seconds. As you said, yeah, you got uh, Jeff. Well, oh, we almost spoke too soon. He was looking good. Oh, that went to backdrop. Jeff, he's rolled him into a small package. He may have him. <laughs> David Elder trying to give him quite a scrap in there, but uh, Jeff had too much of it going for him. He just kept reversing all the moves on it and came out with a uh, victory. And the time on that one was a minute and 39 seconds as Jeff Jarrett comes. Boy, you got your uh, hardware here. I got here, a lot of hardware here, Lance. That's what I, wa I wanted to stop by here if I could for just a second and, and uh, briefly explain what, it, what I was going to try to do in, in this situation as you as I can get all of these belts. This is the brand new That's unification belt right there. The Brand new unified title, right. Uh, Lance, you know, uh, I guess for the past, what, a, no, a number of years I've been wrestling right here in the, in the course of uh, the Mid-South area for the CWA promotion. And uh, True. Uh, a lot of people seem to think, you know, of course, a lot of people are watching this show in, in their own home city. Of course, Memphis, uh, Louisville, Nashville, Evansville, Indiana, all over the, all over the Mid-South. And, and a funny thing, like uh, when, I, when I talk to some of the fans, maybe in Memphis, Tennessee, or when I talk to them in Louisville, Kentucky, a lot of times they don't realize that the, that the wrestlers wrestle in cities other than just their own city. You know, I've had a lot of people uh, in my hometown of Memphis say, oh, you wrestle in other parts of the country too. I thought you just wrestled here yeah. in, Mem in yeah. Memphis on Monday nights. Well, you wish. Yeah, th th that's exactly right. It would be nice to only have to wrestle one time a week. And, uh, you know, the, but the fact of the matter is, and actually there's, there are wrestling cards presented by the CWA and by Jared Promotion all over the Mid-South virtually every night of the week. That's true. And uh, just to be quite honest with you, the, the promoters would love to have uh, me and of course uh, their 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 main uh, wrestling stars wrestle on all of these cards if they could because naturally they want to try to you know get as many people to come to the matches as possible and I've had to in the past you know uh, naturally you can't wrestle every night of the week and I've had to try to uh, limit my appearances and and of course as the years go along you try to cut down as much as you can and wrestle as infrequently as possible but when I won this AWA championship back on May the 9th uh, in 1988 well, all of a sudden then, uh, you know, not only was I wrestling for the CWA area here in the Mid-South, then all of a sudden the and AWA... The obligations of the AWA. The AWA promoters all of a sudden were on the phone every single day saying, hey, look, you got our world title. We need you to come to, I mean, I mean just uh, basically all over the country where they promoted. They said, you know, I, I've, I've Winnipeg, Canada. I'm just trying to think of some of the places that I wrestled for. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, South Dakota, Minnesota. Dakota, yeah. I remember. Yeah, South Dakota, yeah. all of these places. But, I mean, you know, it was, it, was, uh, it was okay, I guess, for them to expect that because, as I said, I was then representing the AWA. That's I right. had their title. Of course, still trying to wrestle here in the CWA area. Then, uh, back on December 13th, when we had the big unification title match, you know, I'm looking at this as, as a big uh, uh, step up in my career and that sort of thing, which it naturally has been. But then, all of a sudden, when I win the world class title, then now, all of a sudden, you've got the CWA area, which is my home area, calling me, wanting me to wrestle places. You've got the AWA promotion calling me, wanting me to wrestle in their towns because I have their title. Then the world class promoters are on the phone every day saying, well, now you have our title, too. Uh, we need you to wrestle down in Texas. We need you in Houston. We need you in Dallas. We need you in all of these, uh, all of these areas also to represent our organization. It needs to be three of you, Jerry. That's yeah, that's, that, would, that would be a simple solution. So what, what the solution that hopefully I have come to, and, and hopefully this thing will work out, is they were gracious enough, both of these organizations, and the CWA and the CWF, all these organizations got together, and they had this unified world championship belt made, which is, uh, which is you know, so impressive that I'm so proud of. No other wrestler in history has ever been That's able to true. accomplish something like this. And it's, it is just that, a great accomplishment. I'm proud of it as I can be. So what I told the people at the AWA and World Class is, this is just my suggestion. If they do it, that's fine. If they don't, that's their business. But I think, and maybe you'll agree that it might be a good idea, uh, and, and as you can imagine how difficult it is carrying this much hardware around with you when you, you try to travel because yeah. you can't you can't, One of them's bad yeah, enough. you can't check this stuff on an airplane because if you lose your luggage and you've lost about uh, probably twenty thousand dollars worth of hardware here as you yeah. want to call it anyway so you try to carry this stuff through airports and it's real difficult I'm, t I'm trying to shorten this up Randy I know you're wanting me to hurry along here I'll do that uh, what I'm trying to say is I call the AWA I call world-class and I told him look uh, 
I now have the unified world title. I'm going to send this AWA belt back to the AWA. I'm going to send this world class back, belt back to the world class. And what I think would be a smart idea is if they would have then have take the wrestlers in their organizations, have a tournament for each of these titles, and then just like, like the WWF has or like the NWA, have, have a company champion. Have a guy who is the champion of the AWA and the champion of the world class organization. Then when I bring the world championship into their area, whoever has this title would be the number one contender in that area for the world championship. Yeah. And do you, does that sound logical? Does that sound like, sound like a logical thing for me to do? And we don't have to lug all these belts here. Okay, so um, that's, you know, that's what I'm gonna try to do and, and hopefully we can get these, uh, the organizations to go along with that. And, and then that would be a way that they can have then championship matches in their own organizations, in their own regions, and uh, I think everybody would be happy. Uh, I wouldn't be spread so thin, and I would be, uh, as I said, automatically have some top contenders for the World Heavyweight Championship every time I go into the AWA or every time I go down into world class. By golly, it sounds like a doggone good solution to me, Jerry, and you'd always have the unification belt as the one that everybody in the individual conference champions would be shooting for and right, still just, have that. Just like right here in the yep. CWA, the CWA Heavyweight Champion, who is right. now Wendell Cooley, is considered the number one contender for this world title in this organization. That's correct. Okay, by golly. Okay, I've taken up enough time, Lance. That's all. We got to take a break. Appreciate the explanation and the conversation about it, Jerry. I hope it comes to pass. We'll be back in just a moment. All right, we're about set to go with a one fall, ten minute time limit match. Now, hear the music. Here he comes with a CWA title around his waist, Wendell Cooley, the Wildcat. Got a one-fall, ten-minute time limit match coming up here against uh, Rick Stone, 225 out of Nashville, Tennessee. Wendell at 226 out of San Antonio, Texas. One-fall, ten-minute time limit, non-title match. Jerry Calhoun says, let's get it going. Bell sounds, and Wendell Cooley with a nice takedown. Puts Rick Stone on the mat in his first appearance on Championship Wrestling. Want to uh, get an opportunity, I hope, after this match. Uh, Wendell, who won the title from Phil Hickerson, and uh, what, you know, uh, Wendell said, hey, I understood you said that was an upset. And I said, well, Wendell, I got to tell you, uh, I considered it. Whoa, look at that side suplex. Bang, he knocks him down, and that is all she wrote. Think he isn't ready? That was 34 seconds worth right there as Wildcat Wendell Cooley comes up with a victory here. Hey, this is the guy. By golly, I want to tell you, we want to congratulate him, too, not only on the... Hey, come on. Just get him out. You already lost the match. Hey, Wendell, you don't have to monkey with a guy. Well, I guess he's going back in again today. Oh. Rick Stone was complaining about uh, Cooley grabbing his tights, which we saw no evidence of. Big bulldog, he hammered him into the mat. One, two, three. Uh, I think that pretty well solves it. That's two wins in 54 seconds. <laughs> it took him 54 seconds for a total of both wins. Congratulations again. He could just keep doing this all. Just get him out of here, Jerry. We don't need any more. What we want to do is take the chance right now to get the official congratulations to the man who beat Phil Hickerson and became the new CWA heavyweight title. Holder. Sid Vicious. Huh? Sid uh, yeah, Vicious. Sid Vicious. What did I say? Yeah. What? what did you just beat, boy? You're really proud of that right there. Hey, you beat a boy that's been in the business about two weeks. Let me, well, you, let me tell you something, Jack. This is my interview time. They want to talk to me, not you, so why don't you carry yourself? Right on you back something. to the back and let me go on with my Bell, You might on, ask just... me something. You don't tell me nothing. You think you're so, so good you just beat a jabroni, a punk, a boy that's been in the business about two weeks. I'll tell you what's going to happen. When I get in the ring with you this week, buddy, I'm going to beat your brains out like a dog that you are. Why don't you do as I ask you to do because you're really irritating me? <laughs> Why don't you just leave? I don't have to leave, boy. Shoe high, stay anywhere he wants to. Why don't you come hey, on? Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Phil Hickerson, the former CWA champion. Oh, oh. He, Dale Bruno. Too high is 
he wants to be known as now slams him from behind bangs him down on the mat and now it's hard for me not to say Hickerson Phil Hickerson misses it Cooley out of the way went for the Bulldog and Hickerson slips out of the ring and down on the floor you want him there he is I'm gonna beat you like that every time I see you. Quit running from me, you dog. Oh, he's gonna beat him like that every time he sees him, huh? I'm sure that that'll keep him awake all night long if you're gonna be in that kind of a shape. Wendell Cooley, the CWA champion who took it from Sid Vicious, just got in the ring with a former CWA holder, Phil P.Y. Chew High or whatever, and uh, he took off. Let me make this very short and simple. I'm going to kick your butt, boy, every time I see you. Cooley took care of him, and I still want to make the official congratulations for uh, uh, Wendell winning it in there. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now is uh, take a look at a little action that we've got uh, coming up. Interesting story on the Dutch Mantel Jerry the King Lawler battle. This started a long time ago, but the current one has to do with the world heavyweight title. When uh, Dutch Mantel came in and said, I want a world heavyweight title. Let's take a look at exactly what happened in that action. I'm not going to give you no match, okay? Is that satisfied? Are you satisfied? You're not going to get a match. That's it. Well, I can well, I'm going to get it one way or the other. No, you ain't going to get it. Come on, Dutch. Oh, hey. tell you. Hey, Dutch Mantel. Dutch Mantel, listen to me. Okay, you hear me? You want a match? You're going to get a match, brother. You're not going to do this and get away from it. I'm going to tell you something else, big man. I'm going to tell you this and listen good, Dutch. I'm going to give you a match because I want you in the ring and I'm going to kick your butt, but I ain't going to put no belts at stake. It ain't going to be a title match. I don't care what you say. But I'll give you your match. Mantel grabs Lola by the hair of the head. Let's see what he's going to do. Lawler now pushed him to the ropes. He misses with a clothesline with a whip. Lawler pounds him. Lawler's got the bull whip. Calhoun holding Lawler back. Calhoun still got Lawler, but Mantel's reaching. Mantel's got a chain. The Dutchman's got a chain. And he cold calls Lawler with a chain. Count of one, two, three. He's beat Lawler. Okay, now that was a non-title match, Dave, as you remember. And then they came about with the titles at stake. And boy, let me tell you one thing. It was Liberty Bowl brawl night, and they ended up in the middle of the South Carolina football players, well up into the uh, Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee, and the battle went on. Now, I must explain to you at this point that the referee had already counted both of them out of the ring because he had gotten tired of them battling all over and not staying in the ring, and he counted them both out. And the match was officially over with a double count out at this particular point. You can see Lawler stalking right in behind Mantel. And, and now Lawler comes in with a chair. And this one was a title match that ended in a double count out. back into the action here in just a moment coming up Wednesday night Evans Coliseum boy I'm telling you some kind of dynamite action you're going to be seeing a CWA tag title match a, a world heavyweight title match a CWA heavyweight match one of the bouts is going to involve Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden going against an outstanding team of Jeff Jarrett and Ricky Morton for the titles that's right Lance a lot of title matches but the one I want to talk about is you, Robert Fuller, and you, Jimmy Golden. You got the CWA tag title belts, and that's something that myself and Ricky Morton are coming after. Last week, guys, you just barely got out of that match. Well, this week, me and Rick Morton are going to do everything in our power to get those belts. And, Ricky, it's going to be double duty for you, huh? Sure, you got that right, Jeff. You know, it's always a pleasure to come back here to this area, Lance, because it's my first time to be on TV here in a long time. I tell really? all the nice fans, hi, hello, and come on down to Evansville, brother, because we got something in store for you. Robert Fuller and Jimmy Gold have been running around at rough shot and everybody around here in this area. But you know one thing, stud stable, you hadn't met up with Jeff Jarrett and Rick Morton yet. 
and you're going to do that this Wednesday night, brother. We're going to show you what it's all about, because if you put 50 cents in this jukebox, you better be ready to dance, because that's what we're coming there for. And then, like he said, double duty. Yeah, and there's a situation coming referee. up here in a minute where you're going to be end up as a special referee in that Lawler Mantell thing. I uh, sure am, Lance. You know what? That's put you in a hard situation right here when you do this right here, because your decision means the world title. And I know when I step in that ring, I know, I, I know Dutch Mantell real good, I know Jerry Lawler real good. But when I step in that ring, brother, it's going to be right down the line for the books. Whoever's a winner is the winner. I'm going to be the special referee. I was asked to do this, and I'm going to do it, Lance. I think I'm telling you what, that's going to be Shoot. a tough position to be Big right in the middle of. May come out with a couple of guys that don't care for you at all, Ricky. Well, but then that's the way it goes. The way things happen, Lance. I've been there many times before. But like I said, when me and Jeff get there, baby, Evansville, Indiana, get it all tuned up. Because there ain't nothing better than rock and roll than Jeff get dead. It's solid gold rock and roll, baby. We'll see you in Evansville this week tonight. Okay, we're ready to go with our next bout. Chris Frazier already in the ring. David? Yes, indeed. This is going to be a one-fall, ten-minute time limit match. And coming in, a dirty Dutchman. Dutchman. Dutch is dirty not Dutch dressed. Dirty Dutchman. Uh, is not dressed, Dave. Hey, Dutch, you got a match in the ring right here. You're out here in your street clothes. I don't and care what I got. I ain't wrestling. Lola can come out here and talk, and you'll take time to talk to him. And I'm going to come out here and talk, too. I don't care what you say. Look, Dutch, you see right here, Mantell, Frazier, the match is booked. And hey, you, you know what you can do with that? You can fold it up and throw away, because I do what I want to do. Because this man right here, whatever his name is, is not worthy of my attention. Lawler didn't wrestle, and I'm not wrestling on TV either. Tay, put that in your pipe. He wasn't about. scheduled to wrestle. You are scheduled to wrestle. What are you going to do? You going to make me wrestle? No, but I'll tell you one thing about it. If you don't feel like that you have I the don't. courage to get in the ring and no, wrestle when you're supposed to do, then we don't have time to interview you, and we've got nothing else to say to you in there. What do you mean? You're talking, I got to wrestle? I'm telling you that you're well, scheduled to wrestle to. in here, and if you don't want to, okay, fine, that's all. I'm not wrestling, Russell. All right, I'll tell you what, look, we got a lot to do here. Would you start the count on him? Let's just count him outside of the ring. Come on, Jerry, we got a lot of show to do. If he doesn't feel like he wants to get in there, we'll just get on with the show. Okay, we're going to make you happy. All right. I'll it's not go a question of making it. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Boot to the midsection of Chris Frazier immediately as he stepped into the ring. Now with an upper arm, he puts Frazier down on the mat, goes for a cover immediately. Well, he got it. 14 seconds of time. Okay, fine. You lived up to the out. Hey, listen, you just lived if up to the out. You can sit out here and talk to Lawler all day long like he's a god. I guess he thinks he's not going to lose that belt. Well, all I, I can tell I come here for one thing, Russell. I know what you And mean. that's what I come to get. I come to get the world's heavyweight championship off Jerry Lawler and on to me. And already they're calling it the last chance. They're saying, Dutch, if you don't take it this time, pal, you're out of luck. Well, yeah, I'm out of luck because I said I come in here for it. And if I don't get it, I'll take a walk on my own. But I won't. I want a special referee, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to eliminate one guy Well, already. you really want a lot, don't you? you yeah, want I do. Just exactly I do. Hit the want. world revolves around me, and that's exactly the way I look at it. Yeah, it don't revolve around you. I have really it noticed. It don't revolve around Jerry Lawler. You used to be a halfway decent guy. I'm telling you. Really no, you changed. I didn't change. You changed. And one guy I'm eliminating right now is Jerry Calhoun. Because ever I, I didn't used to believe it, but the promotion protects Jerry Lawler. They take care of him. They watch his opponents. They watch the referees. They, they take care of Jerry Lawler. I and heard not, that old song so long, Dutch. Jerry Calhoun it. protects him, and I'm not going in the ring with Jerry Calhoun as special referee. In because my if opinion, this is my, Jerry Calhoun's a good referee. Well, in your opinion, don't mean nothing to me. Because in my opinion, I think he protects Lawler, and he'll do anything to keep their old now, friend. Wait a minute. Let me straighten something out, Lance. And to you too, Dutch. Oh, That's right. Me and Lawler are the best of friends. We went to school together. Yeah. We played ball together. But we're the best of friends outside the ring. Once I get in that ring, I got a job to do. He's got a job to do. I do not show any favoritism, Dutch. I play right down the middle. Let me say one thing right now. I know the whole history of you and Lawler, and it don't fly with me. 
So your objection has been overruled and you're dismissed because I didn't ask you to come out here in the first place. Now you can go back to that hole that you scampered out of and scrap because I want a special referee and it's not going to be you because if this is my last chance, I want a fair shake. And I can smell a rat when I see one. Lawler talking out here. He's going to give the AWA belt back. He's going to give the world. He'll do anything to keep from defending the belt. I guess when I called him a belt hog, I called him a belt hog, he got to thinking about it, said, oh, my image is going to suffer. His image is going to suffer a lot when I put that belt around me. And I'm not going to give belts back because I'm going to take them off. So Jerry Calhoun, you're eliminated. Let's now scram, get out of here. If you watched that film a while ago, if it wasn't for him grabbing that bull whip, you wouldn't even be having a title shot. That's the only way you've got to win in the first place. Uh, right, let me tell you another thing about, about you, that. Lawler. They said special referee. You know who they, who they wanted as a special referee this match? Jackie Fargo. Hey, and you got to think I'm... bring in a special referee. What's yeah, but it ain't going to be Jackie Fargo, pal, because he's the one that helped you steal the belt in the first place. So I'm eliminating two guys right now, Calhoun, and I'm eliminating... Jackie Fargo, by God. Oh, I guess you're just running this show, huh? You're going to be the man that calls all the shots? Well, no, that ain't going to be the way it is, Dutch Mantel, because, as you know, when you eliminated uh, Jerry Calhoun, when you eliminated Jackie Fargo, you know who he suggested for a referee? Why don't you tell him who you suggested? I'll tell you who I suggested. Since they threw those two at me, I suggested Austin Idol. You know what he said? He said, oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, like I'm going to go in the ring with Austin Idol, the referee, you and Austin Idol like this? No way. Yeah. I know this is none of my business, but I want to come out here today. I've done it before, and I'm willing to do it again. Y'all guys are having trouble on who's going to enter, uh, who's going to referee. Well, I'll step in the ring and referee y'all's match, and I'll call it right down the line. Hey, oh, wait a minute. He started originally refereeing, and he is a capable referee. You know what happened? You know what happened to him when he first refereed? He got the soup beat out of him, and he sucked uh, soup through a straw for about two weeks in the hospital. Jeff, hey. Y'all all good friends. Y'all all like family, man. I'm not stepping in and getting beat up front. You and your old man have known Jerry for, I don't know, 50,000 years. Hey, and you're eliminated, Tom. Let me tell you I'm something. Not, hey, X-Mate him. He's not refereeing it either. Hey, hey if, if it ain't gonna be my way, it ain't gonna be Well, let me tell you something. If you wasn't such a jerk, you might have a few friends, too. Well, I guess you're covered up in friends, Lola. Well, Like you don't even come on, man. I've been up and down the road with you, Louisiana. I've wrestled him, wrestled you, and I really don't care who wins because I want to wrestle a winner. I'll do it right there in the middle, brother. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there you are. There's a good combo. Certainly a capable guy right there. Bill on me. Bill, wait a minute. This is my last chance, and if I don't take it. Yeah, you look at it for the last time, pal. You ain't gonna be looking at that next time you step in ring me. Bill, you've had trouble with Lawler, Lawler's had trouble with you, and me and you've had trouble back and forth, but you've teamed up with him on occasion, won the Southern Belt, and I think that I'm smelling a fish here. I'm gonna have to eliminate x oh, hey, 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 let me just ask you, do you want the match or not? I think you want to wrestle Yeah, I think you're right. Well, you know, that's the matter with that's, that's what's the matter with Australians. They got a big, fat mouth. I want you to do something to that hat. Shut up, get out of Come on, we got a joke. Hey, you guys look like you're obviously having a lot of trouble deciding on somebody. Look, I hadn't been here that long, right? I'll referee and I'll call it right down the middle, just like it goes. If it's okay with you, okay with you. let's get this settled. We've got a show to do here, and you're standing out here holding up, eliminating this one, eliminating that. Okay, wait a minute. Let me let me talk to you a minute, Wendell. You're from Texas. I'm from Texas, and you know, you know what this low life egg sucking dog done to a fellow Texas guy. Shut up, Jared. I didn't ask you. You know what he done to Kerry Von Eric? Now I think us Texans should sort of fit together here. If you want to referee it, that's all, that's all fine with me. Okay, I'll take it. Okay. Let me set you straight first, Mr. Mantell. You may be from Texas, and I may be from Texas, and he may have won this belt from somebody from Texas, but I want to tell you one thing, pal. If you get out of line one time, or lay your hands on me one time in this match, I'll knock you out, and all he's got to do is cover you for the three count. <laughs> You're for Lawler. I'm not for Jerry Lawler, and I'm not for Well, the way you're Lawler. talking, you are. I'll cut it right down the middle. Okay, so it's I see it. It's nay him, he's dismissed too. But boy, everybody leaves. I want to leave you with one thought. Hey, come on. Hey, 